Hey everybody, Joe coming to you from New York City. Doing something a little bit different today from Monday morning coffee. I'm actually spending the evening and afternoon and evening in New York City and right behind me is Lincoln Center where Diane and I are about to go in to see a classical concert. I think of it as kind of a, a an audio palette cleanser for some of the noise and, and bad music experiences we've had recently. So we just had a lovely wine and cheese at a lovely bar right across the street. We're about to head over to one of our favorite restaurants in New York City called The Smith. So we're gonna do that, go to the concert. I'll be right back to you to talk about the music when we get over to Lincoln Center. So Diane and I just had an incredible dinner at The Smith here in Manhattan. And by the way, if the camera's a little shaky, Diane has already had a glass of Malbec and a glass of Prosecco and a, what was the third thing? Oh yeah, vodka cranberry. So the camera's a little shaky, you know why. <laughs> but anyway, so we're about to go into a concert to see a oh, performance of Mozart, Mendelssohn, and some more modern piece I'm not familiar with. And a lot of people think classical music is somewhat elitist, and nothing could be further from the truth. Much of the greatest music ever composed is the classical stuff you're gonna see in a place like Lincoln Center. And I highly recommend you do it. And it applies to your photography as well because classical music, under, unlike most pop stuff, really reveals itself when what you're doing is listening to it and not doing anything else. You're concentrating on the music, you're letting all the nuances and the fine points come in, and that applies to your photography as well. It all comes down to something I talk about all the time, and that's slowing down. Slow down, don't think about anything else, and let it all in, whether it be your photography or your music or your art you're gonna enjoy it a lot better. So we're gonna head into the concert and I'll give you a report when we get out. So it's the next morning after our evening in New York City. I'm just back at home sitting on my deck. It's a lovely morning. I actually put on a sweatshirt this morning, even though it's supposed to be 80. It was not quite 60 degrees when we came out here this morning. But anyway, I digress. Let's talk about the concert, the music, and how the experience also applies to photography. The concert was phenomenal. Um, all the pieces were happy and uplifting. Uh, it ended with Mozart's 38th Symphony, which if you're not familiar with it, highly recommend you give it a listen. It's just a happy piece of music. And the clarity and the interweaving of all of the melodies and harmonies in that piece is just exquisite. And as I mentioned, classical music is not something for the elite. It is something for everyone. And what Lincoln Center has started doing is we had orchestra seats. Yeah, we were towards the back, but they have this pay what you want uh, thing now. They have recommended ticket prices. But we spent over $100 for a concert recently at Bethel Woods, which was an absolute disappointment. And we spent $35 a ticket for Lincoln Center for an incredible orchestra, incredible performance. And uh, it was just such a great experience. And instead of a bunch of hooting, hooting, whistling idiots surrounding you at a concert at a place like Bethel Woods, I was in a concert hall with 2,000 people, and when a piano was playing single notes, you could hear it perfectly clearly. Why? Because it's a different experience. When you're at a concert like that, your job or your goal there is to actually listen to the music, and that's what I really don't like about the big event spaces. Uh, now, if you go to a small club and hear music, I am all for that. I think that's a great experience. But when you're in a giant place or an arena-like place, you're really there for the experience, not for the music, because you're hearing just a little bit of the music. And in fact, that's why the Beatles decided to stop touring, because they couldn't even hear themselves um, playing, let alone being able to produce anything great. That's why they went into the studio. Um, I don't, and I don't think it's, it's uh, my age at this point. I've always been someone who liked to actually listen to music. And to me, the application to that or the thought process to that that matches photography is it's about giving yourself to the activity that you're, you're pursuing at the moment. When I go out west, when I'm in Grand Teton or out in Durango and Telluride, to me, the incredible beauty of the mountains deserves my attention. 
I just give everything into it. I just let it soak in. Yes, I take, take a lot of pictures, but I also put my camera away and just look around and take it in. And that's the beauty of a concert in a, in a classical venue or a small venue like a club. You get to really hear everything that's going on. With your photography, you get to see everything that's going on. And to me, that just makes for a much better experience in music, art, photography, that you're giving all of your senses to that one thing and not using it as something else to keep you busy or background noise while you're trying to do something else. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I do that all the time. But if you're going to listen to music, if you're going to look at art, if you're going to pursue your photography, give yourself to it completely. And you're going to get the full enjoyment out of it. And you're also going to find your results are going to be a lot better more consistently. So anyway, I don't mean to be preachy, but I just encourage you to give all your senses to what you're doing and your results are going to be better. So that's it for Monday Morning Coffee. I thank you for joining me. Uh, we're gonna, as I mentioned, we'll take a couple of weeks off. I'll be back three weeks from today. So in that time, I hope you have a pleasant summer experience. I hope the weather cooperates here in the Northeast. It has actually turned out to be absolutely beautiful these past couple weeks. So I'm looking forward to that. And oh, one last thing. When I do come back, I will give you my first in-depth review of my experience with the OM-1. What do I feel about it so far? Yeah, I'm sold on this camera completely. I don't know everything that it does yet. Uh, I still have some things to experiment with, but so far my experiences, experience with it, taking it to uh, England, Scotland, and France, it was just a dream camera to have, and it's so light. I mean, that's what's important to me. Were the megapixels an issue? Turned out absolutely not. I got plenty of megapixels. When I wanted to shoot some kind of big grand scene, I do like I always have done. I shoot panoramic stitches. That's that even handheld, uh, you can still get great big files. And the other thing I love is that this little lens right here, this is my 300 millimeter lens for this camera. So can't beat it as far as size and weight go if you're doing traveling. And I just, I just don't like carrying around a lot of big heavy gear. It just makes the experience more of a uh, bit of work, especially when your flying is involved. So anyway, I'll be back to you in a couple weeks. I've got a bunch of new stuff to share with you and I wish you a great couple weeks until we're back together again. Thanks for joining me and happy Monday morning coffee to you.